Recording in progress. All right. My name is Ariel Mora. Today is April 5th of 2023. The time is 4 p.m. And we are in Pewaukee, Wisconsin, VFW. I am interviewing Charles Hawking, who was born on January 8th, 1927 in River Falls, Wisconsin, and served in the World War II between January 8th and 1945 through August 3rd, 1946. Uh, Charles was a mailman second class in the Navy and served as a postmaster general of Palawan Island. This interview is sponsored by the Bell, um, Bell Tower Memorial. Okay, and Charles, what were you doing before you were serving? I was uh, 14 years old uh, in high school. In high school? Yeah. Yeah. And why did you choose the Navy? I uh, just felt I'd rather go with the Navy than the Army. Yeah. And so basically I wanted to join the Navy. So I I, enjoy, I enlisted before I turned 18. Okay. And um, why did you decide to enlist? Was there any particular reason for that? Well, it was kind of the thing to do at that time. And we'd been in the war about two or three years and you just wanted to do your part and do what, what was expected of you. And you, you just automatically did it. Mm -hmm. You didn't you didn't think about why am I doing it? You just did it, you, just you know, never gave it second thought. Okay. And what was your relationship with your family? Excuse me? What was your relationship with your family? With my family? Yeah. I had two brothers. They one was in the army and one was in the navy, and then I had a sister. So that was it. That was it. Yeah. What did your family think of you enlisting? They just accepted it. Just you know. It. Yeah. They were all gone. It was just my mom and dad. Oh. Okay. So they just accepted it. And they weren't scared. No. Were. Well, I'm sure mothers were. They always are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. What was your basic training like? Basic training was pretty basic. Uh, we went to Great Lakes, and it's interesting, that was 82 years ago, and I don't remember how long we were in basic training, but from basic training, we went to uh, to uh, Florida, to Jacksonville Naval Air Station for schooling and that, but the basic training was just pretty much basic. Just basic. Don't remember too much about it. <laughs> it was a long time ago. A long time ago. Did you have any interesting experiences while training? Excuse me? Did you have any interesting experiences while training or or you can't recall? Basic training, no, there was nothing really experiencing to go on. You know, it was pretty much cut and dried. Gotcha. So okay. no, there wasn't really much chance to have experiences. Okay. After your basic training, what did you do next? Where did you go? Then after basic training, we went to Jacksonville Naval Air. We were split up into two groups and I was sent to... Um, Jacksonville Naval Air Station and was enrolled in uh, aviation electrician's mate. And I started to go to school there for a period of time, not a long period of time. And then they were split up again and um, I was shipped off to Palawan. Oh, okay. It's probably all right because I didn't have enough training <laughs> as an electrician to work on an airplane. We didn't have that much time. Okay. It was very basic, very, very basic. And how did you get to Palawan Island? Uh, a troop ship or cargo carrier to Manila, and then we flew in on a C, on a DC-3 into Palawan Island. Wow. Yeah. How was that like for you? That was interesting. That was interesting. I'd never been in a DC-3 before, and I'm an, I'm an airplane buff, so uh, Ooh, that was very interesting. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. Did you have any friends there? Pardon me? Did you have any friends there? No, no. no? Mm -hmm. Just you. Mm -hmm. Just you. Right. One of the experiences, though, that's interesting. When we left Treasure Island in San Francisco, when the bay was very calm, we got out into the water, into the ocean, and it got very heavy. And I got seasick, Ooh. which almost everybody does. And about the third day, I came down to the mess hall, and I heard somebody all about, Charlie Hawking, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> and here was a kid that I went to high school with. Oh, we really? played football together in high school. Really? He was on ship's crew in the Navy. That was quite interesting. And uh, 
he kept me in pies all all the time I was on there. Yeah. He brought me food every night. That was good. You know, was he like working in the kitchen or something? Yeah, he was on kitch, uh, uh, on chef's crew. Yeah, oh, okay. that was his duty. Yeah. So there was a friend there. There was him. There yeah. was him. Yeah. Oh, wow. was he also seasick, or was it that just you? Yeah, just he was just there for that. Yeah. Just there for that. All right. And um, when you got to Palawan, what what was going on? Well, when we got to Palawan, the war was pretty well winding down. So the naval base, the air part, aircraft part of the naval base was pretty well gone by the time we got there. So when you get there and you don't have a specific job, you get general duty. And that can be anything from anything to anything. Mm -hmm. And um, there was one fellow I met asked me, he said, uh, why don't you help me out in the post office and get away from that general duty? Because it could be just not the most pleasant. And I said, fine. And after about two months, he uh, was discharged. So I became postmaster general of Pell Long Island. And did you like doing well, that? I do. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, got to fly to Manila a couple of times, pick up stuff and things like that. Oh, wow. So that was interesting. Wow. What type of mail did you deliver? It was just uh, packages and, and mail and, you'd, you know, just pretty basic post office stuff, yeah, yeah. selling and stamps and this type of thing. It was nothing major, but you took care of packages for everything when they came in. And so it was good. So you were kind of controlling the, yeah. the mail there? Right. Oh, OK. And you said you liked it? Yeah, right. I had my own Jeep and they gave me a 45. Oh, wow. I never, I never carried a 45 in my life. <laughs> I have no time for guns. And I went out in the jungle one day and just for the heck went and fired it. <laughs> knocked myself down. Oh, really? It's a pretty powerful gun, but that's the only <laughs> that's the only gun I've ever fired in my life was a Colt 45. Interesting. I have to <laughs> laugh about it. <laughs> All right. And did you make any friends in Pal uh, yep. Palawan? Then? Yep. There's a couple of friends that we met. We stayed friends for a long time. There's one friend, John, that we met in boot camp, and we went from boot camp to uh, Jacksonville together and Palomar Island together. He lived in um, Oregon, and uh, we corresponded it for years, and then he had business in Chicago. So he called me, and uh, we met in Racine uh, quite a few years later, and it was quite nice. And then shortly after that, he died. Yeah. Oh. But that's really the only one that I remember from that. From Palawan? You have, you meet a lot of people, but a lot of them, you, you don't stay with friends with them that long. You know, yeah. once, once you're gone, you're gone. But he and I, for some reason, stuck together, which was kind of nice. That's nice. So you didn't keep contact with many of your friends no, from Palawan? No, uh, he was the oh, only okay. one, yeah. And how long were you there for? How long was I in Palawan? Yeah. I never figured it out, but it was less than a year. Less than a year. Less than a year. Did you have any interesting experiences there? Nothing too major. There really wasn't that much going on. Um, no, nothing major going on there at all. Mm -hmm. There was no town or community to go into. You just pretty much stayed on the base, you know, gotcha. that was it. Was there any like civilians around there? Oh, like, yeah. The uh, Filipinos came through the base all the time. Some of them worked there, but they were around all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Were they nice to you guys? Oh, yeah. They were. We were nice to them and they were nice to us. That's yeah, nice. it was fine. Where did you get your food from? mess hall but i don't know where they got it I honestly don't know where they mm. it was all shipped in and everything but i remember the food was good there was no problem yeah. with that but uh, exactly where it came from i don't know <laughs> you just ate it <laughs> just ate you just it. ate yeah. it yeah <laughs> did you do any fishing no but we built a sailboat out of a um, gas tanks we cut them in half and built a sailboat oh wow i remember that that was kind of fun then we broke the rudder <laughs> anyhow um 
there wasn't that much activity going on. It's, it's, it's you know, I, when you told me about this, I tried to think the other <laughs> night about, and that just goes back so far. I don't remember yeah, a lot of a lot of things that we did and didn't do. I know when we came home and got on the ship to come home. Yeah, you remember the that? first thing they said, we need some volunteers to do something. And they said, if you'll do that, you can get a hot shower. And boy, we all volunteered because that was <laughs> the first hot shower we'd had in a long, long time. Oh, really? And they, they came through with it all right, too. Um, when we left Palawan Island, we went to another base, and I don't remember where it was before we were shipped home. And I, um, oh, that's interesting now that you mentioned okay. it. The fellow that was running the post office there was a friend of mine. And oh, he yeah. said, why don't you come and work for me? And I said, I will, mm -hmm. because I've been put on different details, brought on this detail, this detail. And so I did. And I didn't tell somebody about it. Oh. So I had what they call a captain's mass. Gotcha. That's where you get chewed out. Oh. And I got something called a certain call that every night on the hour you had to get up and go re report to some place for a week oh, because wow. I had done that. So oh, okay. So you got in trouble. Week, I got in trouble. Yeah. In trouble. Yeah. That was interesting. So you were supposed to let someone know that you. Yeah, I was put in supposed to let someone know that I because I didn't show up for a work detail and they thought I was oh. goofing off. And I, I had a lieutenant who went to bat for me that, and he got me cut down to just a couple of days, but uh, that was long <laughs> enough. They were giving you a hard time? Yeah. All right. Was it worth it? Pardon me? Was it worth it, the hard time? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. And um, how... How was the setting over there? Was there like, how was the weather in Palawan? Shorts and t-shirt weather <laughs> yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any fun experiences over there with friends at the beach? No, no. Uh, I know one time my duties, I got generator duty where you, they had two huge generators that supplied the power for the base and you get assigned to taking care of those 24 7. and you'd have to um, shut one generator down and start up the other one with a pony engine pony engine is a little gas engine it's a start up first and then that starts up the diesel mm -hmm. and we did that for a while but then you got signed different duties that i don't even remember what they were <laughs> now until i got postmaster general <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um, you said, you mentioned that you remembered going back home, right? Yes. Yeah. How long did that take? We got into San Francisco on a ship. We stopped at Hawaii on the way. We didn't get off of the ship. We didn't get into Hawaii, but we just tied up for the night. And then we got into uh, into San Francisco, and I think we were there maybe not more than two or three days, and I got shipped back to St. Paul, where I en enlisted, and then that was it. Wow. That was it, yeah. Do you I recall um, your last day at Palawan? Were you nervous, or how did you feel when you were leaving? Don't remember you a don't thing. don't remember? Just glad to be gone. Just glad to be gone. Yeah. Yeah. Not that it was bad, you know, I mean, that's why, I mean, you know, there, well, anyhow, no, it was okay. It was okay. It was fine. It was yeah. fine. Yeah. It was fine. And uh, what do you remember uh, happening when you got back home? It was amazing how you slipped right back into normal life. And I think that was true because I wasn't a combat veteran. 
I was just somebody that called up and did what he had to do, and that was it. I think that's a lot different than someone who has been in combat. So I just slipped into a life like normally. We went to, we had the GI Bill, we went to college right away. But the thing I remember is that no matter when we got together and we were all veterans, nobody talked about it. Nobody talked about it. You never told what you did or what you didn't do. Maybe once in a while you'd do it, but you would think it would be more conversation, but there was, you hardly ever referred to it. You hardly ever referred to it. If I want, I've often wondered about that, but that's the way it was. Yeah. And then I went to school and that's the way it went. Yeah. And what did you do for school? Well, I went to uh, River Falls State Teachers College for a year. And then I transferred into Stout Institute in Menominee and, and got my bachelor's degree there and went back later on and got my master's degree and that's where I ended up. Do you remember anything from your college experience? College experience? Yeah. A lot of work. A lot of work. Yeah, we lived at a trailer park. We? <laughs> my wife and I, yeah. We... Oh. Yeah, we got married the second year of college. Oh, wow. And we lived in a trailer park in Menominee. So you met her in school? No, uh-uh. My neighbor. Ooh. We grew up next door to each other. Wow. One of those things. So anyhow, that was interesting, you know. She, um, your neighbor was the love of your life? <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, she was. Lost her about three years ago. Really? And... Um... After college, what did you do? I started teaching in New Richmond, Wisconsin for two years. And then I then I moved down to Oconomowoc and I taught there for about 38 years. Oh, wow. And then, then I went from industrial arts into the media area. I was in charge of all the AV equipment in the TV studio and that. And, um, for seven summers, I taught the college course at Whitewater, the yeah. University of Whitewater, a basic AV course for seven years. That was interesting. Wow. Met a lot of nice people there. That was fun. Yeah, tell me about that. Yeah. What was that like? That was fun. That was great. I enjoyed that. I met an awful lot of nice kids and nice people. And um, that, was, that was a good program. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And um, did you just teach at the college you know, just just the summertime for seven summer. summers and then the rest of the time i was it's at high school right yeah yeah that was it which one did you like more the college or the high school oh they both had their advantages yeah. i like i i like both of them yeah. i like both of them yeah and did you meet more people in the college say some, that again and did you meet more people in the college yeah, I met quite a few people and made some good friends, stayed with some friends for quite a few while. Yeah. Every once in a while, you'd run into them a couple of years later yeah. at a teacher's convention or something. They'd come up and say, remember me? And I'll say, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, that was about it. Yeah. And um, how, how was life with your wife, if you don't mind me asking? It was good. It was good. It was good, yeah. We started out with nothing like everybody else, but uh, <laughs> things have worked out very well. Yeah. yeah. No, we had a good life. We have one daughter, oh. and she's coming to see me the day after tomorrow. Oh. She'll be here for eight days. That's going to be nice. I'm looking ahead to that. <laughs> she lives out in Oregon, the state of Oregon. So I'm going to be glad to see her. Well, I'm glad to hear. Yeah. Um, did you have any lifelong consequences to? Um, being part of the Navy? No. no, no. I, when I got out of the Navy, I joined the reserve. And then when the Korean War broke out, I got called back. But they said, your teaching finished the year. And at the end of the year, they never contacted me. So I didn't get pulled into the Korean War. Gotcha. But uh, you no, know, once I was out of the Navy, that was about it. The one thing that I 
feel foolish about is the VA. So many friends of I have at Three Pillars go to the VA for all of their medical things. Mm -hmm. And when I got out of the service, nobody told us about the VA. And I just assumed that you had to be a, a combat veteran to go to the VA. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Oh. All you have to do is be a veteran. Oh. And it's good and it's great and it's free mm -hmm. and it's interesting. I didn't know that. I, one of the, I don't know how I messed up on that. But anyhow. It's just a little accident. <laughs> yeah, it's a little accident, yeah. <laughs> And how would have that helped you? Well, it's just, it is... it's just that all your medical bills are paid for, your glasses, your thing, everything you oh. need, it's all done by the VA. And you can't do that anymore? Well, at 96, I don't think I'll try <laughs> to do it now. <laughs> Let it go. How did your perspective sh um, uh, change after you came back, or was it intact? Well, I'm going back to that old thing again. My perspective did not really change that much because my life didn't change that much. Um, so there wasn't, there wasn't a big change, no. no uh, you were treated no differently. It was about the same, yeah. Um, what do you consider to be your most significant contribution during your service? What do I think yeah. my contribution was? Yeah. Not nearly as much as a lot of other people did. I just uh, was there when I was called on, and that was about it. But the fact that you showed up is what yeah. matters. Well, the main thing is it's you did your duty, and, and that was it. Nice. I think they say that for every combat soldier, there's 10 people behind him, if I'm not mistaken. So it's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, what are some of the life lessons you learned from the military service? <laughs> Be careful what you volunteer for. <laughs> and uh, be careful what you volunteer for and be careful what you see to certain people yeah. and just kind of be on guard. And uh, you have to accept, you learn to accept all different kinds of people. And I do not mean this in a disrespectful way, but we had a lot of fellas from New York in our group and they were a different breed yeah. than guys from the Midwest. I like, mean, why do you say that? Their attitude yeah. towards life, their attitude towards us. Mm -hmm. um, it was quite pronounced. I thought it was quite pronounced, but you, you learned to live with it. You didn't, you didn't bother you, but uh, yeah. it was interesting. Were they just, um, in what way were they different? Like, were they just more obnoxious or more? Mm. Well, let's just let it go and say they were different. They were different. Yeah, they were, <laughs> they different. were different. And we were different to them too, I suppose. Yeah. But a lot of them were very nice too. You know, I don't, not saying they were bad people, but it was interesting. Yeah. Did you have any conflicts with any of no. them? No, no, no conflicts. No. I have, I, in the entire time I was in, I never heard of any group that I was with that had any conflict with anybody else. So that was good. Yeah, that, that was is, good. That is good. Um, what about um, your friends? Your friends didn't have any conflicts with anybody? No, nobody? Not that I know of. No, 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 it's pretty much the same. All right. And is there any more? Any more stories you have? No, that's about it. That's about it. If I could think of some, I'd tell you. Right. Okay. Um, how did you get the mail to the servicemen? They came to the post office. They came to the post yeah. office? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They came to the post office. Did you have any interesting relationships with any of the people that you handed the mail to? No. 
Mm -mm. No. No. Just random people. Yeah. Yeah. Random people. All right. I'm sure there are friends, but I've forgotten about them now. You know, it's yeah. a long time ago. Interesting. This is. You've given me a couple of sleepless nights <laughs> trying to think back about <laughs> right. what what I could tell you and what I could say. You know, because. I got out the calculator and said, my God, that's 82 years ago. <laughs> you don't remember things that much. You know? Yeah, it's hard to keep track of it. I, I, I can remember um, I, was walk, I was walking a girl to school the day we heard about December 7th. And the funny part of it was, it's a girl I always wanted to ask help, but I never did. Oh. Until we had about a 60th class reunion, and I told her what I thought. <laughs> that was funny. But no, I can remember that day out in front of our house, we, we heard about it. That was interesting. How yeah. did your guys' reunion go? Um, they have been fun. But the last one we went to, the last one we had, we met in the president's house. Oh, wow. And we're there that few, you know. There's only just a handful left, so... They don't even have them anymore. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. How did the December 7th, I know you mentioned December 7th, how did that impact you or what, what yeah, were your thoughts? Yeah, I, I can just remember we were walking to school when we heard about it. And um, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Then I don't remember much about it after that. Yeah, you just sure. kind of fit in. Yeah, you weren't in shock. You were. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And um, when you were in the reserve, uh, how did that work? In the reserve? Yeah. Um, my name was just in a book. It was just in a book. We never, they never, we never had reserves meetings or anything like that. We didn't do anything like that. We were just there. But I never got called, so that's okay. Okay. Were you hoping to be called? Pardon me? Were you hoping to be called? I'm sorry. Were you hoping to be called? Oh, no, no, no. Because no. Korea was bad, bad place. Yeah. That was, and then you went a gentleman who lived in Korea, they, they, that was their own private hell. Yeah. yeah. What were your thoughts on Korea? Pardon me? What were your thoughts on Korea? Well, up until then, I didn't have any, but I know when I, took the honor flight to Washington, that Korean memorial just got to me. I just, yeah. it got to me more than even, even the Vietnam Wall yeah. was something, but that Korean memorial just hit me harder than anything else I've ever hit. It's interesting, while we were there with a friend of mine, who was in Korea, two little girls came up to him and they were from Korea. Oh, wow. And they came up, they were with their grandparents who didn't speak English. Mm -hmm. And they came up to this gentleman who was, in, who was in his 70s, 80s, and he wanted to thank him for what he did in Korea for, his grand, for their grandparents. Oh, wow. And he just lost it. He just went all to pieces. He wow. just lost it when those two little girls came up and thanked wow. him for their grandparents. Wow. That's hitting home close. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. But I didn't have any experiences like that. Yeah. You weren't there with him when that happened? No. Mm -hmm. And uh, where did you see this memorial? Where was this memorial? Pardon me? The Korean memorial? Yeah. It, 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 in, um, Washington, D.C., Washington, the Korean DC. Memorial, yeah. That one really, really got to me. And you flew there? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Did you go with any of your friends? No, no, I didn't. I didn't know anybody then. And yeah. War is bad. Yeah, war is. Yep. All right. Um... So is that all, Charles? I mean, that's about all I got to say. Yeah, that's about all. Is yeah, okay. 
All right. In closing, this has been an interview of Charles Hawking uh, regarding his service during World War II. My name is Ariel Mora. The time is uh, 4.40. And um, thank you for agreeing to this interview. And most importantly, thank you for your service, well, Charles. Thank, thank, thank you. you so it's much. been nice meeting you. It's been nice, know, greatly you nice You did a good you. job. It was thank very you. good. You did too. I'm glad, we've, I'm glad I finally decided to do it. <laughs> I'm glad you did. It I'm was glad interesting. we're here. <laughs> All right.